introduce yourself. Yes, I'm Michelle Stinson. I'm a counselor too at the Southwestern Oklahoma State University Financial Aid Department, or as we're known on campus as the Student Financial Services Department. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just get started then right away. Um, what is a student loan and what are the different types of student loans? Okay, well usually when we refer to student loans, most students are referencing um, their aid from the FAFSA, which is a federal loan through the federal government, but there are also alternative loans or pri private loan providers that have loans. You can get a loan from your local bank, um, organizations such as um, Citizens One, Sally Mae, there's a whole list of, of organizations that offer education loans for students. But most of the time, students are referring, when they refer to student loans, are the loans they've been offered through filling out the FAFSA, which is the federal form for financial aid. That's what you will see when you look at your financial aid portal at Southwestern as awarded to you as student loans are the federal loans. Okay. Um, so, how do students go about getting a student loan if it is needed? Well, through the FAFSA, that's probably the simplest method, is to fill out the FAFSA. In fact, the new simplification process makes that as easy as possible. So they will go online to studentaid.gov and fill out an application. They will have to have a username and ID set up with the federal government on that website and then they'll be able to enter their information. If the student is an undergraduate student and a dependent student, then they will um, be asked to invite their parents to participate in filling out the FAFSA as well. Um, the new simplified version pulls the tax information from two years before. So let's say for this fall where it's going to be the 23-24 year, um, it will be taxes two years prior to, the, to that year. So that's the information they'll be pulling from the IRS. Okay, um, and then do you happen to know when the deadline is to fill out that FAFSA? The deadline for filling out the FAFSA is not until um, the July, like for this year, which is 23-24, uh, would be July 31st okay. of 24. So you could be filling out two FAFSAs right now if you have not filled out your FAFSA for the current year and you're planning on attending in the fall, you would fill out the 23-24 FAFSA as well as the 24-25 because both of those would be um, eligible to be filled out at this time. Um, another one on that too, would, is there any benefit to doing it early? Like is that something that students should be getting done as fast as possible yes, or is it okay to wait? Definitely. Usually the FAFSA is available each year in October. This is the first year for the following school year because of the simplification process was delaying things with the federal government. It did not open up till December 31st. Hopefully in this fall for the following school <laughs> year it will open up on time at the end of October. And yes, the advantage of doing it first is it's first come first serve on some free money. So if you're, if the student has need, which um, is determined by that FAFSA calculation, um, then their the free money is is first come first serve. So if your FAFSA is dated earlier, it's considered for those as long as we have the money for it. Um, we're only allotted so much money for some of those grants, so the quicker you fill out your FAFSA, then you have more of a chance of getting that. There are some that usually you have to have your FAFSA filled out by December, but because of that deadline that's changed for this one year, and you need to have your FAFSA filled out ASAP, and it'll go date range by the amount of money we have to allocate for those special grants that are free money that you don't have to pay back. Because a student loan, obviously, is an interest-based um, item that has to be paid back mm -hmm. by the student someday, so you'd really rather have that free money okay. over the student loan. Okay. Um, how should students know if a student loan is the right option for them? If they don't have any other option, if, if they can't pay for their educational need and they know that what they want to do requires a degree and they're going to need to have this degree to do the job ultimately that they want to do, 
um, and their family is not able to um, support them and they're not able to maybe um, work while they're in school, then that may be the only option is to take out student loans. Okay. Um, so kind of bouncing off that one, how should students know what type of loan would be best for them? Okay, and I did mention the fast filling out the FAFSA for the federal loans, but for an alternative loan, you have to fill out another alternate op application with one of those companies. So um, it would just kind of depend um, for that student um, to decide on what would be best. We usually say federal loans are better than alternative loans because the interest rate is so much lower and it's a set rate for the year. So the student has an idea. The other loans, um, I have a list of items here that I usually tell students if they're not eligible for a federal loan for one reason or another. Um, when they go to the alternative loan provider to make sure that um, how that's going to affect their credit score for applying for that alternative loan. Um, does that alternative loan require SAP or satisfactory academic progress to be um, met for that loan to pay? Um, what's the current interest rate? How often does that interest rate um, increase? Is there a maximum interest rate that it can go to? Um, also, is there any kind of repayment fees associated with the loan? Do you have to start repaying the loan while you're in school? Or um, is there a maybe a option to start paying for it and an incentive to pay it off early? Um, if you have to have a co-signer, which a lot of times students would have to have one for an alternative loan, is there some type of release option after a certain period that that co-signer would be released from the responsibility of that loan? And then is there a minimum number of hours that the student has to be enrolled in? Um, those are some things that you need to ask if you're filling out for an alternative loan. With the um, federal loan, the good news is there's no credit check. You just fill out that FAFSA application, the interest rate is set. Um, and then there's the advantage, if you get enough subsidized loan as an undergraduate student offered to you, those loans don't accrue interest while you're in school. And so um, you don't start accruing interest until you either graduate, drop below half time, or quit school. So it's an interest-free loan until you're actually finished with your education. Okay. Um, so you answered some of the next one there. Um, but just uh, kind of in a broader sense, what are some advantages and disadvantages of some of the different types of loans? Yeah. Um, basically, yeah, some of that is the interest rate, you know, paying attention to take that subsidized loan always first. And students always get confused because they're like, with the federal government, as an undergraduate student, you can have a subsidized loan and an unsubsidized loan, um, or a combination of the two. Or if your need is not high enough, you may only have unsubsidized offerings. But remember, it's alphabetical. Su subsidized comes before unsubsidized. So if you have the option for that subsidized loan, take that first and take all of that. And then if you need additional funds, that's when you would dip into the unsubsidized because the unsubsidized loan does start accruing interest from the time the money's dispersed to the student. So it will ongoing be accruing interest until you start paying it back. You'll have the option with the government if you want to start making those interest only payments um, while you're in school. Say you get um, some kind of tax refund, you know, sometimes students get, get excited when they get that, well that would be a good way to invest in your future would be to go ahead and pay off that interest so it doesn't keep climbing and making that um, loan payment going to be that much more by the time you graduate. So that would be an advantage. And then the questions I just asked about when you're looking at an alternative loan provider compared to the federal government, just making sure that you know what those um, stipulations are so that you're making a wise choice for yourself. Okay. Um. So that kind of leads into the next one. Um, how long do students have to pay off student loans and does this vary on the type of the loan? If so, how? Okay. Um, I know mostly about the federal loans, so I'm going to talk about those because each one of the alternative loan providers are going to have a different system. They're set up similar to the federal loans, but most of the time not. A lot of the times on a federal loan, you might have to start paying back almost immediately while you're in school. So that's something, you know, with those alternative loan providers, each student has to look at depending on which provider they pick. With the federal government, they have several payback options. Um, for students, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to start paying back until you either quit school, graduate, or drop below half time. You have a six-month window after that period before payments begin. 
online at studentaid.gov. They have several different, there's a calculator on there that they ask you to utilize and it helps you decide what's going to be the best free payment option for you because there are several repayment plans the government has. If you've been making payments for 10 years and you still haven't paid off your balance, you'll prob probably qualify for one of the repayment plans that allows for that loan to be written off. Um, you would be required to pay tax on the amount that the government writes off on that loan, but um, if you're, I believe it's actually 10, 25 years once you, um, on the, the most popular um, payback plan. So, but um, you, most students pay it off within 10 years, so I kind of said that wrong. But 10 years, usually a student will have their, their loans paid off. If it goes up to the 25 year limit and a student doesn't have their loans paid back, then part of that will be written off by this, the government if you're in one of the repayment plans that they've um, assigned that will do that. And then you just pay taxes on that amount that the government wrote off for you. So most students on the average will pay back a loan in 10 years. Okay, awesome. Um, with this series, I plan to give financial advice to students. So I believe a big part of this is avoiding potential mistakes. What are some mistakes that students slash families make in taking a student loan? I think the biggest mistake they take is they just look at their account and it's really easy just to push the accept button. And so they'll accept the full amount that they've been offered instead of doing the math beforehand. Um, if you'll look at your circumstances, look at what it's going to cost you to go to school. Um, maybe you're in a situation where really you only need to worry about tuition and books to be paid for with a loan. Um, you're, you have a job and it can pay for your transportation, food, and housing. Um, then look at that amount and see what that's going to be and only take that in your loan amount. Um, don't just automatically accept the full amount that's offered to you. Do it semester by semester. I have some students that come in, you have to fill out a form to do that. The online acceptance process is for the year, so it accepts the full amount for the fall or the spring, or if you're a spring only student, it just gives you the spring option on there. Um, but most students will just hit that accept button and accept the full amount, and then you've got that full loan amount that you're gonna be responsible for someday. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have any more advice for students slash families on this subject? Yeah, um, something when I first started working here that I, I researched and found was that um, if a student will pay attention to what their starting salary is going to be when they graduate college, this degree they're going to get um, someday and their dream job, what that's going to be, what that salary is, take 8% of that and that's the loan amount, no more than that amount they should be taking out in student loans while they're getting their education. That will set them up for success so that they won't be investing so much of that first year salary into um, paying back loans. That it will be something they can actually um, be able to enjoy their new job and not be strapped because they haven't taken out too much money in loans. So I think that would be a good way for students to maybe evaluate how much money am I taking out and am I taking way too much that I'm going to have to pay back that I have no idea how I'm going to do that. Because I think sometimes that's where students get in, in, in situations where it's a problem for the future. And if it does get into a problem for the future, what options do the students have? Right. There are going into forbearance or um, just staying in contact with your loan servicer. Going on, um, as soon as you take out your first loan, at studentaid.gov, same place you fill out your FAFSA. Um, if you do an alternative loan, you'd be working with an alternative loan provider, but I'm, the government's the side of it that we do mostly through the school. So um, go to studentaid.gov and you can start seeing who your loan servicer is, what the interest rate is, and um, how much you're building up interest on a daily basis. Um, Staying in contact with them once you start your payback plan. If something comes up and you lose a job, you change jobs and your salary goes down, those kinds of things can also change your payback rate. So you would want to communicate with them before you go into default, which means you're not the period of time has lapsed that you're not making payments when you should have and it causes a lot more problem for you. It'll keep you from getting student loans in the future. It can cause issues with 
um, your credit history, those kinds of things. So communicating is the hugest thing you can do is to talk to that loan servicer and say, I've got a money situation that's come up and I'm not going to be able to make these payments. Can we do something to help me? And they can set up new payment arrangements. They can lower that payment rate. They can put you on a forbearance for a certain period of time. Maybe while you're looking for a new job, when you get that new job, then set up a new payment plan that works with the new salary you're receiving. Okay. I think that's it.